My name is Josh Fisher. I'm 26 years old. I've been a full-time bladesmith for over a year now. At my forge, I work with the Wounded Warrior Project, teaching the veterans how to make knives or other blacksmithing projects. Winning the $10,000 would allow me to expand the shop and really do a lot more with Wounded Warrior Project. I'm Mike Baldino, I'm 30 years old. I'm a high school technology teacher. I'm a part-time bladesmith. The thing I love about bladesmithing is that you're always pushing yourself. You're always trying to learn something new. I'm super excited to be here. It's been a dream of mine for a long time. How's it going, Mike? Pretty good, how's it going? It's going swell. My name is Brian Hennis. I'm 18 years old. I've been forging for five years. It took a lot of convincing to get my parents to be okay with me making knives and swords in the garage when I was 13. But I think over time, they started to appreciate my work. I know what I'm doing, and I'm ready to prove that. My name is Neil Warren. I'm 40 years old. I've been a part-time smith for three years. I started smithing because I saw the competition, and I knew I need to try this. My first knife was a little bit better than a nice prison shank. Now I've got a whole line of knives I make, so it's a passion more than it is even a hobby. Whitesmiths, welcome to the forge. We've developed a very unique bladesmithing competition that's going to test every aspect of your skills. Now, there's going to be three rounds. At the end of each round, you're going to present your work to our panel of expert judges. The judges for today's competition are ABS Master Smith Jay Nielsen, Historic Weapons Recreation Specialist Dave Baker, and Edge Weapons Specialist and Kali Martial Artist Doug Markaida. Now, Bladesmiths, these men behind me are the ones who will decide which one of you will be leaving here with the title of Forge and Fire Champion and a check for $10,000. Now, guys, we love a good salvage round in this forge, and that is exactly what we have in line for you today. We want you to build signature blades in your signature style using this. <laughs> Gentlemen, what we have here is a pile of rubble. In it are a bunch of 10-plus pound sledgehammers that we want you to use to build blades that fall within these parameters. We want you to build signature blades between 13 and 15 inches as measured in a straight line from tip to where the cutting edge ends. Now, I know we're asking you to use these 10-pound sledgehammers, but that doesn't mean we want 10-pound blades. At the end of round one, your blades cannot exceed two pounds. For a knife that large, it'd be under two pounds, but in the time constraints, it'll be pretty difficult. In round two, you will add handles to your blades, turning them into fully functioning weapons. The judges will test for strength and durability by hammering them into a stack of bamboo, then they can check your edge retention in a water tube slice. Now, gentlemen, remember, at the end of this round, there will be an elimination, so work your hardest. We have put three hours on the clock, so good luck. Your time starts now. So what's the trick? For me, grab a sledgehammer, grab a porta band cut a hunk of it off, throw it in the forge. I've made two other blades out of sledgehammers. It takes a while to break down that material because of how thick it is, so I'm going to start grinding away at that steel. We've actually seen the angle grinders with the cutoff wheels go through chunks of steel pretty rapidly. The problem is, you got such a small wheel, it gets awkward when you have a large piece of material to cut through. My plan is to cut off about two pounds. I don't want to miss parameters. I eventually got it cut through enough to where I can just hammer it off. I'm the first smith to get my hammer head in the forge. I feel like I'm ahead of the game a little bit, but anything can happen, so I gotta keep working. We'll see. First thing, I'm gonna try to cut it off right at the eye, because it's probably gonna be impossible to cut through the entire diameter of that head. It seems like a chop saw is going pretty slow. It's throwing a ton of sparks, but he's not really getting into it. I know I have to change up my game plan. So I go to the angle grinder. That second you lose trying to cut that steel off was another second somebody else was getting ahead of you. I figure maybe it's close enough I can just hit it with a sledgehammer. It's not going well. Now I'm behind on time. Nope. Oh, I like the idea. I just don't think he's cut enough through it. I don't think so either. Kind of fun to watch, though. <laughs> well. I have done some salvage steel blades. I'm very confident that I can make a knife out of this. The chop saw is very frustrating. It's definitely getting to my head a little bit. 
Would it take any more time to just heat up the entire hammer and work out what you need? And just completely forego chopping it up? Honestly, it's the way I would have gone. Just throw the whole thing in the forge, dry out what you need, and cut it up. I think that the best course of action is just staying on the chop saw. Moving around and changing setups is going to cost me minutes. I need to try and make a 10-pound hammer turn into a two-pound knife. I start thinking in my head how much of that I'm going to need. So I just kind of eyeballed that, figuring if I cut off a little too much, I can always take some away versus add some. I'm at the chop saw, and I can feel it start to gum up. And I'm like, oh my god, it's going to take me three hours just to get a hockey puck out of the end of this thing. So I finally grab my angle grinder. Chop saw is just going to take too long. The amount of time these guys are taking, they could have had one half of it heated up in the forge already and started drawing the steel out. Yeah. I'm able to just get it cut all the way out. From here on out, I've got to really pick up the pace so I can make up the time I lost cutting it out. Blade Smith, you have two hours and 30 minutes remaining. Took about two pounds of steel, so I'm not worried about missing that weight parameters. That's less steel to cut off later. Overall, I think it'll save me some time. What I don't like about what Brian's doing is he's thinning that metal out an awful lot. I'm trying to wind it out as much as possible, but to do so, I have to thin out my blade a lot more than I originally planned for. One big problem with a thin blade is that I could get an improper heat treat or a warp, and ultimately, it can make the blade break. I don't want to overdo it. So I have to be real careful not to draw this out too much thinner. All right, we got two smiths who choked off their hammers, heating up steel. We got two guys still working. I knew I had to change up my game plan to get through that steel in time. Everybody's using some kind of wheel, whether it's the porta band or the chop saw. No one's thought of using the torch. Yeah, could you use the torch just to cut through where the eye is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, right there we go. Oh, there we go. It's seriously like, like they can hear us. I know they can't, but Mike went straight for the cutting torch. Oh. The torch is working. Not as well as I was hoping it would work. Almost. Yeah! I wish it didn't take so long, because I don't have much time left now. Every little mistake adds up, and it takes away from your overall ability to produce a nice knife. I finally get through this sledgehammer. I know I'm the last one to get this in the forge. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get this done in time. How's it going, bud? It's going. I don't have a press or power hammer. Start on the press. The press is better about moving fixed steel. That's yeah. only good for finishing. Thank you. Mike, he gave me a bit of advice. Thanks, Mike. Josh on the press for his first pass with a lot of steel. A ton of steel. It's moving a lot of material. I'm feeling like I'm making a comeback. Now that my steel's hot enough, I need to get this into a billet shape as fast as possible. I don't like the way the shape of the blade is starting to go. It started to banana on me a little bit, and I need to get this thing straightened out. I don't want to get sent home because of a banana-shaped blade. What I need to do is just, instead of relying on the press so much, get some hammer work in. Once I hammer it back out flat again, it all just started to shape the way I needed it to. Gentlemen, one hour and 30 minutes remain. I have a very thin blade, so I want to get a good recurve in it. That'll help my blade chop. Now that Brian's on Big Blue, he's using a lot more of that heat. You can still be using more. It's actually going really well. Definitely a lot faster than just using my hand hammer at home. Definitely starting to feel good, getting down to a more final shape. Finally got the scale out to get a ballpark of where I'm at. Josh got to concern himself with having so much steel that it goes over that two pounds. Three. If I can't get this under two pounds, I'm gone. I get this under two pounds. Josh just ran to the scale and gave a thumbs up. Oh, good. I know I'm good on parameter. I feel extremely relieved. Oh, goodness. 
the shape's coming out well, but I can see other Smiths that are farther ahead than me. We're getting there. Right now, I'm just above two pounds. There's too much steel there. I think all of these Smiths are terrified of having to cut steel. I still need to take up a little bit more weight. I teach kids every day how to measure. If I fail for something that's based off a of measurement, well, what can I say? After cutting off the spine, I weigh my knife again, and it's within parameters. Solid. I'm starting to feel really good seeing everything take shape. Now it's all about the weight. I'm thinking maybe I should add a fuller because I know that it will help retain strength while reducing weight. The blade's coming out great. I start to notice a couple of hammer marks, but I still have to quench the blade. I'm going to use my time wisely. I think I can get those ground down later. Blade Smith, you have 30 minutes left. I'm ready to go in for the quench. It's very critical. I don't overheat the blade. You could pick up a big warp. You could pick up a crack if you're at the wrong temperature. If I don't do this right, I'm not going to have enough time to go back and redo the heat treating process. All right, Josh is in. Everything feels good, and then I'm right over to the vise. Get it clamped, got a couple of seconds out of the quench where the steel is still malleable. Everything looks almost perfectly straight. I'm just gonna take it over to the grinder and get as much weight off of it as I can so it feels good in the judge's hands. I got a nice grind on my blade, so now I'm gonna head over to the forge and now I'm ready to put it in the oil. All right, Brian's quenched as well. We got two down. It's got a pretty decent warp in it. This is not good, because my blade is really thin already. I don't think there's any way to fix this right now. And even if there was, I could risk snapping my blade. So I'm just going to let it cool down and then try and grind out as much as I can before the end of the round. I hope this isn't what sends me home. I'm really happy with my knife. It's got a good heft to it, so it'll be able to chop through anything it needs to. I'm ready for my quench. And there we go. I can quench. Everything looks straight, looks good. I got a little bit of time left. I'm just going to go try to finish grinding before I got to bring this to the judges. All right, gentlemen, 15 minutes. I don't have much time. So as fast as this forge could heat this blade up, I'd get it in the oil. Feels in the oil. Everybody's got a blade quench. My quench went great, but I still got a lot of grinding. I'm trying to get it refined to where it looks pretty decent. Five minutes remaining. All of a sudden, I hear five minutes left, so I kind of panic and start throwing some grinds towards it that are working to get the metal down, but it's not really what I typically would do to clean up a knife. If I could make it to round two, that's something I think I can fix no problem. Five, four, three, two, one. Put down those sledgehammers. This round is over. My blade is the thinnest blade, and I guarantee you that it's probably got the biggest warp. I'm just hoping it's not something that sends me home. Gentlemen, in this first round of competition, we asked you guys to salvage steel from our sledgehammers and make blades in under two pounds. You all delivered, so congratulations. But as you know, this is a competition, and only three of you can move forward. The time has come for the first critique. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Yes, I am. Please present your work. All right, Josh, it looks like clean work. I mean, you still got a lot of meat on here to thin down. You still got about 3 sixteenths here. So if you have any issues at all, it's within grinder range. And I like the proportions that you put on the handle. Nice job. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. Let's see what you got. All right, Brian. The steel looks solid, but you got a good warp. And correcting that's going to be tricky because there's not a ton of meat left on the spine. And you're going to have to be careful here because you're going to have a gap laying flat scales on that. So getting creative if you move into the second round might not be a bad idea. But overall, it's a good start one. Mike, you're up next. You ready? Yep. Please present your work. All right, Mike, I like the design. Your work here is solid. I like the way you ground it. 
your handle construction, it's just right for a big blade like this. But overall, if you move forward, you're on your way there. Good job. Thanks. Neil, you ready? Yes, I am. Let's see what you came up with. All right, Neil, profile-wise, is a chopper pretty dialed in, but I'd love to see that profile refined if you're moving forward. You've got a couple of hammer marks that are a little on the deep side. And I'd also like to see you either lose or refine these fullers. They're just sort of fullers right now. But it's straight and it's solid. Nicely done. Well, gentlemen, we gave you guys a very difficult task in the first round of competition, and you guys all delivered. But only three of you guys are moving forward into the second round. Bladesmith, who will be leaving the forge, is. Neil, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut, and Doug's going to tell you why. Neil, everyone turned in a solid blade, including yours. But in comparison, your blade is the least refined and therefore will require the most work moving into round two. And for that reason, we're sending you home. Thanks for your hard work, man. Oh, yeah. I just got a little overzealous with the hammers. Probably could have done without the fullers. Good fight, man. What I would tell a smith coming into the competition is have fun. You could win. You could be the first out. You never know. But it'll be the best time of your life. Well, gentlemen, congratulations. The three of you are moving forward into the second round of our competition, where you will fix any issues that the judges brought up, as well as add handles to your blades, turning them into fully functioning weapons. But I have some bad news. The pantry is off limits. The only thing you can use out of it is pin stock. The only place you can get your materials is in this pile of debris. Now, after this round is complete, the judges will test for strength and durability by hammering your blades mercilessly into a pile of bamboo and then checking your edge retention in a water tube slice. Good luck, work hard, your time starts now. now looking into the pile, what would you guys choose? I'd go for the hammer handle. Pretty solid, safe yeah. choice. And you've got a handle that's pretty shaped for you. I found a piece in the pile that I'm happy with, a nice hardwood. I'm going to be using what's called loveless bolts, a mechanical fastener to hold the scales onto the blades. Getting in a little bit too much of a rush, the drill press runs clear through the handle material. Clear through. I've got to start over. A quick mistake set me back quite a bit. I grabbed a hickory handle. It's strong wood. It's reliable. I know it's going to stand up to the test. Now that I got my scales split apart, I'm just going to go nice and slow and steady and keep everything going forward. Mike already fitted up two scales to his tank. It seemed like it was a perfect fit for his handle, too. The first thing I'm going to do is glue back my blade, because that's going to fix my warp. I'm slowly heating up the spine of my blade until it's a nice blue, grayish color. I think you're just going to try to bend it straight. That's always kind of scary. I mean, it should be pretty safe with this steel, but, but that's still but, nerve wracking. Yeah. And if I bend it too far, that would put unneeded stress on my blade. And I don't want to risk snapping it. I'm just slowly putting a little bit of pressure on there until I feel it give a little bit. There you go. It looks pretty straight. There's still just the tiniest bit of warp, but it's something I can grind out, and I'm ready to move on. All right, let's set you guys in. I'm mainly looking for solid brass pins. That's what I'm most familiar with. And all I can find is Corby bolts. Corby bolts, you have to actually drill in two separate holes, so it takes a little bit more time to get that right. Setting Corby's is one of those places that if you're in a hurry, you can create a problem for yourself. Well, you've got basically a barrel nut, and you need to get those linked up so the threads bite. Well, if you don't drive it all the way down, you can get to where that first thread just pulls the other thread out and strips it. Yeah, we had a challenge not that long ago that during the strength test, the handle just fell off because it was only like one thread holding each bolt. Exactly. Uh, I might have screwed that up. Uh, I'm starting to twist the corner bolts together. Two out of the three are holding it on. I think one of them is just kind of chilling there. So I'm just hoping that the glue holds everything together. Don't want to do that again. Wait, Smith, you have an hour and 30 minutes remaining. I'm starting to work on my handle, and I'm having trouble with the first bolt. It actually cross threads and gets stuck. If I don't do this right, there's nothing to stop that handle material from shearing off as this goes through the testing. 
Ideally, he'd mix some of the sawdust in with that epoxy. I don't have time to keep messing with this, so I center the sleeves as best as I can, and I'm going to fill those holes in with some epoxy and sawdust to just make it a little bit more solid. There you go. Ah! I'm really hoping that it holds up to whatever Jay throws at it. Now that I got my blade all straightened out, I'm going to let it cool while I try and make some handle skills. I chose a plastic handle that has got a really nice swell, and I wanted to get a nice swell on the back of my blade so it doesn't slip out during testing. Brian's going to have an interesting task here if he's going with that synthetic handle. You can't grind them at full speed because they heat up and they melt. As I'm grinding on these handle scales, the rubber's tearing apart from the inside core, and that's an issue. I thought so. There you go. I can't use these handle scales anymore, and that's 20 minutes that I just wasted. If I don't get this set up properly, I'll be screwed. I head back over to the pile, grab a wooden handle, and go cut it into scales. Hindsight, I should have gone with the wood because I know that that's solid. I still have so much work to do with my blade. I can't waste any more time. Last thing for me is just really put a good edge on this. I've got to test this somehow. That's a new one. Cutting paper towels like that. That's how sharp that blade is. But will the edge hold up? Yeah, you guys are going to figure that out pretty quick. Pretty confident I've got a good edge on the blade. So I'm just going to spend the last couple of minutes refining that some more. It's important to get this handle right, because if that part's comfortable, they're going to have more control over the weapon when they're using it. So I'm just going to go for a simple handle design. It's kind of a Coke bottle bottom with just a flat top on it. Keep doing what you're doing, but you only have 30 minutes left. I still have to shape my handle, get some good indexing so that it'll fit the judge's hands properly and it won't slip or turn on them. Brian's handle looks really thin. Yeah, Brian needs to put a little contouring in there instead of just having it flare out slightly. But not too much. But not too much to make it too narrow. Yeah, it's going to be a balancing act. I wish I could finish my blade a little bit more, but I just don't have the time for it. I have to get a nice edge on my blade before the end of the round. Five, four, three, two, one. Gentlemen, turn off your machines. Put down your hammer blades. This round is over. Biggest concern is that pin on the front of the handle. If that gives way, the whole handle could slide off of the knife. We'll just see how it goes. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to our strength test, bamboo smash. What I'm going to be doing is hammering your blades into this bamboo, but instead of just using a hammer, we're going to use this heavy metal pipe instead. It's not about what your blades do to the bamboo. It's what the bamboo and the pipe does to your blades. Josh, you're up first. You ready to go? I'm ready. Let's do it. Being the first one up is definitely nerve wracking. Those tests are designed to be extremely brutal, and pipes are usually pretty tough. It's a great way to destroy my handle. Good job, Josh. Everything held up nicely. You got a good full grind on this. Your handle is comfortable. It's just the right size. You got just a slight bit of glinting. But I mean, it's still got an edge on it. Good job. Thank you. All right, Mike, how do you feel after seeing that? I'm feeling all right. We'll see what happens. Let's find out. The biggest concern going into testing is obviously my handle scales. I had real trouble with those Corby bolts. Oh, I hope they hold on. Anything could happen. Uh, if something goes wrong, the handle pops off, I could be going home. All right, Mike, you survived. Everything's still straight. You have a couple lints, but you still have an edge on here. The only two things, your one scale started to pull away a little bit, just from the shock traveling down the spine but it's not loose or anything like that. But overall, you survived. Nice job. Brian, you're up. You ready to go? Yes, sir. Let's do it. I've seen the other two competitors, and both their blades survived really well. 
There's still just the tiniest bit of warp on my blade. I'm afraid that my blade could snap or bend, but hopefully it'll last. All right, Brian, you survived. Good job. Take a breath. You got a thinner blade here and a pretty fine edge, but it held up really well. I don't even see any glinting. The only thing is right around here, took a bit of a bend to the left there. Not severe, but it is noticeable. Your handle is very rounded. There's really not a lot to hold on to. Just a little more meat and a little more flare on the back end of this would have helped a lot. But your edge is still good. You survived. Nice. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths. Now it's time to find out how sharp your blades are. This is the sharpness test, the water tube slice. To find out how sharp your blades are, I'm gonna take your blades and try to cut through these water tubes. Josh, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, I am. All right, let's do this. All right, Josh, let's talk about your weapon here. First, I like the profile that you have, very clean lines. Now let's talk about your edge. You have a razor's edge over here, and more important, sir, you will cut. All right, Mike, your turn, so you ready? Yep. Let's do this. All right, Mike, let's talk about your knife here. Once again, it's got that nice, big knife going for it. When my hand goes in there, it actually fits my hand nicely. The flare you have there, my pinky can grab onto that and I have good retention with a big blade like this. Now, your edge. No issues whatsoever in the cuts, and overall, sir, your knife, it will cut. All right, Brian, your turn, so you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Brian, let's talk about your blade here. It really feels light and fast. Now, your edge cut cleanly. The bend that you took slightly on the strength test was not an issue in cutting the water tube. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Cool. You guys are not making it easy on the judges, so they're gonna need a minute to talk it through. And while they do, gentlemen, I'm gonna ask you to please step off the forge floor. All right, guys, we got three strong and sharp blades, but somebody's got to go home. Doug, what do you think? Brian's blade on the strength test took a little bend. Mike's blade, his handle took a little bit of peeling, but it did not affect my tests. Jay, what about you? Those are three of the cleanest cuts I think I've ever seen in a water tube test. But Brian, his handle's the least refined of the three. OK. Dave, what about you? We've got three blades out there that tested the same, so it came down to feel and Brian's, it's just not as well designed as the other two. All right, Dave, you made a decision? Yes, I have. Jay, how about you? Oh, yeah. And Doug? Yes, I have. All right, we'll call him back in. Bladesmiths, we did not go easy on you guys, and you all delivered. But this is a competition, which means somebody has to go home. And the Bladesmith leaving the forge is... Brian. You nailed everything we asked you to, but unfortunately, you're not gonna be moving forward, and Jay's gonna tell you why. Brian, you're a very talented smith, but taking that bend in the strength test and the least refined handle of three are the reasons we're sending you home. Brian, you clearly have what it takes to fight in the forge, but unfortunately, you're not gonna be moving forward in this competition. I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Thank you for having me. Thanks for your hard work, man. I think I put out a good piece. Unfortunately, it just wasn't quite as good as my competitors. Overall, I had fun out there. It was nice being around other people who appreciate the craft as much as I do. Gentlemen, congratulations. The two of you have submitted yourselves a spot in the final round of our competition. Now, we are sending you back to your home forges to build an iconic weapon from history. And that weapon is... Oh, sweet. The Polish Warhammer. Polish Warhammer is an Eastern European weapon used during the 16th and 17th centuries. Featuring a blunt hammerhead on one side and a sharpened spike on the other, they were both designed to inflict deadly blows and piercing stabs through an opponent's armor. 
It was an effective, lethal weapon used on horseback and in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Polish Warhammer was a pivotal weapon during the Battle of Vienna, which began the decline of the Ottoman Empire. Gentlemen, when you're building your hammers, we want you to fall within these parameters. It needs to feature a hammerhead and an S-curb spike. The overall length needs to be between 26 and 28 inches. The entire construction, aside from the handle, needs to be made of steel. You also need to include a pommel. I've never forged a hammer before. Definitely feeling nervous inside, but bladesmithing is what I do every day. We'll just see how it goes. You guys have four days. Good luck. We'll see you then. Sweet. Back here at my home forge in Syracuse, uh, getting ready to work on this Polish Warhammer. Get this nice and hot. I plan on doing a twist through layers of Damascus and then drawing that out into the handle of the overall weapon. You're looking good. You're not required to do Damascus, but I like to challenge myself. $10,000 is on the line. It's going to help me stand out. Should be good. That cold spot right there, it's not good. It means that there's most likely not a complete weld underneath that layer of steel. I f***ed up. <laughs> so now I'm working on the hammer head billet. Same issues are popping up that the hammer handle billet had. So I begin chasing the delaminations. Oh, it's just that tiny little corner. You can see the rest of it stuck nice. Everything else is solid underneath. I realize I just got to cut off strips from both sides. I don't want to risk one of those cracks coming through later on. Well, day one was pretty rough, but I have solid billets that I can now focus on shaping tomorrow. We're here at my shop in Northern Kentucky. My overall plan for today is to try to get a, most of the rough forging out of the way. I've never made anything like this before. It's a little outside of my comfort zone. The biggest concern for today is getting the eye of the hammer punched. If the eye ends up being crooked or doesn't punch cleanly, then I'll never get a good handle fit. It might come loose. There we go. So getting the eye punched went pretty good. I'm really happy with it. Day two, both the twists came out perfect. Now I'm going to take these two billets down to the grinder, and I'm going to just fuller them out and lose some weight. I decided I'm going to harden and heat treat the handle of the hammer before I join the head to it. It's so long and skinny, I'm worried about it bending during the test. This heat treat's a little bit risky. Pray nothing warps. If it twists or warps or bends, there's not much steel to take away to straighten it back out afterwards. If that doesn't work, I don't know what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to go for it. Oh, straight as could be. We got a lot done today, so I think we'll be in good shape by the end of day three. Day three, I finally got the handle fit nice and tight, so I feel really good about that. It's ready for the quench. This is really critical for the strength of this. And repeat that for the spike. See that skating on the head? Skating on that spike, just what I want. Beginning of day four, then I have the hammerhead securely attached to the handle. Quench went smoothly. Yeah, this came out so sweet. I'm just going to oil it up and then give it a good test. I think we're good to go. But I figured we might as well test it out on a uh, door. And it goes straight through. The head is still firmly attached. There was no damage to the weapon at all. Day four, we've got the hammer almost completely done. Before I do all the final cleaning and polishing on it, I figured I'd do a couple tests with it. It'll kill. It feels great to have made it this far. It was a really tight competition up to this point, and I'd really like to see it stay that way. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Forge. We gave you four days to work on your renditions of the Polish Warhammer, and they both look absolutely menacing. But I want to hear about the builds before we get into the test. So Josh, how'd it go for you? I made my hammer out of 4140 medium carbon steel. Did a differential heat treatment on the head and the spike and a other handle wrap. Awesome. Mike, how about you? A little rough on the first day, but it came out much nicer afterwards. So the hammer itself is made out of 1520, 1095, and a twist pattern Damascus. It's the first time I ever made this kind of pattern Damascus, and it came out really nice. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, one of these hammers is going to be worth $10,000 in the title of Forge and Fire Champion. 
But the only way we know how to find that out is by putting them through a few tests. And up first, the kill. Doug? Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of damage your weapon will do, I will deliver some lethal blows on this ballistics dummy. Now, I am looking to see how your weapons will crush and pierce the armor that our ballistics dummy is wearing. Josh, you're first. You ready for this? Yep. Right, let's do this. If that spike's not sharp enough, it could get caught on that chain or not puncture the way it's supposed to. This is probably the most nervous I've been this whole competition. All right, Josh, first up, the handle construction. Your leather wrapping that you have here does give me a very good grip, and I'll need that because for a one-handed weapon, it's a very heavy weapon. That spike penetrates deep into the chain mail. Your hammer feet crushes the helmet, and it went deep into this ballistic dummy. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will kill. Mike, your turn, sir, you ready? Yep. Let's do this. Pretty excited to see my hammer test and see what it can handle. It's anyone's game at this point. Hopefully, I can pull ahead and perform better than Josh's hammer. All right, Mike. First up, your handle construction is a little bit on the blocky side for me, but your spike pierces nicely into this ballistics dummy. Your hammerhead, the crushing blow is going to the heart, push some chain mail into the heart. It crushes the helmet and overall, sir, it will kill. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, our statue smash. This test is all about what those statues do to your hammers, not what your hammers do to those statues. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Yep. This is just a brutal test. Those statues look a lot more solid than I was thinking they would be. I know I did good work. I'm just hoping that everything stays nice and tight. All right, Josh, first off, your construction design is really beautiful, but you've taken, abandoned that head. Everything's still tight, which is great. It's just the weight is on the extreme side, but it held up, well done. All right, Mike, you ready? I'm ready, we'll see if the hammer is. <laughs> yes, we will. All right, a couple things going on, Mike. The way these are inset, they're actually kind of sharp. So every impact, literally, you can see the little raised spot. The Damascus pattern's fantastic. The chef's still spot on straight. No damage on the spike, but the head's loose. Where this was all smooth, I can now feel a rim. Overall, for this test, it held up well. Good job. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the Leather Bag Smash and Bash. Now, I'm going to take your weapons, and I'm going to see if they can smash and bash through these double-layered leather bags. Josh, you're up first. You ready for this? Yep. All right, let's do this. All right, Josh, you wrap your handle nicely so where I can have good retention on a very heavy weapon like this. That weight lends itself to crush right inside the bag to smash it, and your pick right here penetrates deeply. Overall, your weapon, it will cut, smash, and bash, or anything you want it to do. Mike, your turn, so you ready? Yep. All right, let's do this.
All right, Mike, let's talk about your weapon here. Initial hit, letting the weapon do the work, not so much on the impact, but the lightness of your weapon on the second strike, I can continuously deliver smashes and bashes right into the leather bag. When it comes to smashing and bashing and maybe cutting, great job. Thanks. Well, gentlemen, you both showed your skill and your craftsmanship throughout the entire competition. But only one of you guys is going to be leaving here $10,000 richer, carrying the title of Forge and Fire Champion. Today, the Forge and Fire Champion is Josh. Congratulations. You're the Forge and Fire Champion. Mike, unfortunately, your hammer's not coming out with the win today, and Jay's going to tell you why. Mike, I love the fact you used Damascus on your hammer, but your head is starting to loosen, and the handle's uncomfortable to wield. That's why we're sending you home. Well, Mike, you have what it takes to fight in this forge, but today's just not your day. And unfortunately, this time, I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Champion. I was a little disheartened to hear that I'm not the winner, but at the same time, I still feel like I lived up to my dream. And I'm glad that the competition was so tight the whole way. Josh is a great guy. I look forward to seeing what he does in the future. Josh, you are the newest Forge of Fire champion. You're going to be walking out of here with a check for $10,000. How do you feel? Amazing. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't even think of what to say. I'm just so excited. This is an amazing opportunity, and to come out of it knowing that I won is just huge.